welcome to Eregina 120, a list of 120 things I learned uh, during my time taking a, degree, or a computer science degree at the University of Regina. And I'm Jeff Cliff. Uh, I'm recording this video in beautiful Thunder Bay, Ontario, at the home base uh, hackerspace. And uh, hopefully uh, these are just going to be short videos uh, getting across uh, the most important things, the things that you know, I paid the big bucks to get into my head uh, as a student. And so this is the second video of 120, uh, what I am calling Forest versus Trees. And this, uh, I guess, video was partic in particular inspired by an argument that I had got in uh, as a student. Uh, so it's probably worth you know, taking a side or a moment to point out that it is valuable getting into arguments as a student uh, because you do occasionally learn things even if you can't admit it at the time. Uh, but it, this particular argument went along the lines of uh, Graham, who I was arguing with, uh, was trying to make the case uh, that computer science students should not worry about learning low-level languages, uh, low-level programming, uh, operating systems, um, assembly language, and other such things as much. I mean, it's still valuable to know. But in his mind, it was much more valuable to learn the higher level, the highest level languages that were available uh, in that particular era, possibly Java, uh, .NET, um, and to specifically learn the highest uh, level application uh, programming that was available and that in his view, all of the, the real value in programming uh, came from actually making applications for end users that worked, uh, the, uh, you know, tying of business needs to actual programs, and that there was already so many people working on the low-level stuff that it wasn't worth getting into it. Now, uh, he was possibly very correct in everything that he said in that case. Uh, I, I don't want to you know, lead the listener into thinking that any of that is not true. Uh, but I, I do think that there is a middle ground that I did not see as a student uh, between focusing on learning and being able to recall from memory uh, every low-level detail of the entire operating system stack and, of course, focusing on the high end and only knowing that. Uh, looking specifically at the Debian project, uh, even in 2000, there was 14,000 man years of effort that had gone into the development of that particular operating system. Uh, in the preceding 15 years, uh, we've seen exponential growth in that number. So, uh, although I don't have the, the exact statistic to uh, offer you, I can assure you that so many more lifetimes have been spent uh, than you could possibly spend on understanding and optimizing that entire operating system that it would be, in life extension uh, side, uh, completely pointless to try. Uh, even if you were to try to learn the low-level stuff, uh, it would take many, many years to master, even enough to troubleshoot uh, successfully the kind of core of the stack. Uh, so there is, I would suggest, a middle ground, uh, something, a, a middle path, something that we'll talk a little bit more about in later videos, uh, that somewhere lies between the forest of the high-level language view, the top-down, um, very abstract down view of programming, and the kind of tree or bottom-up uh, kind of low-level view uh, going up. And that there's value all over the programming stack, and especially in places where it's not fully understood what exactly the code does. Uh, of which there is an increasing amount as time goes by, as people retire, as old programmers cease programming, as people develop and then throw their, you know, their, their masterpieces into the, the open source community where it's maintained for a while and then forgotten about because it just works. There's just so many places in the computer programming world, so much code that's out there that you could learn, so much that you could learn about, so much that you can improve, so much that you can master, 
that is valuable because it's not understood by others and that you can get an edge by mastering it yourself. And especially uh, given that at, with time, uh, things do change, uh, especially on the high end. So all the, the nice APIs that Graham would have been learning and mastering you know, maybe 10, 15 years ago, uh, you know, who, who uses Windows 95's APIs anymore? Nobody does, or very few people do. Uh, a lot of it does get carried over generation to generation due to backwards, compatibil or backwards compatibility, but a lot of it doesn't, and the world does slowly move on beyond a lot of it. And so, yes, you can, you can focus on the high level, but you risk being outdated as the high level changes, as the, the underlying platforms shift underneath it. But even the low level um, stuff changes as well. Uh, ASICs wa were perhaps uh, out there, but I certainly didn't know about them back then. Uh, and even something as simple as basing most of our understanding of how to design circuits on the NAND uh, gate uh, is not necessarily permanent. We could, either through quantum computing or some other advance, uh, have to rethink, uh, even to the, the level of the NAND gate, uh, how we design our circuits. And so it's always worth uh, having a balance between the, the, the high and the low level. A, a, a kind of middle view, a middle path of learning a little of both, uh, a, a lot of the middle, uh, knowing how things interconnect, knowing how systems work together, and starting to view the, the problem of what to learn about less in terms of high versus low level, but more in terms of in interlocking systems of meaningful things and meaningful objects, object-oriented thought, and platforms that both work together and can work together. Um, obviously, this is kind of an uh, abstract view in itself, um, and you know you're going to need to learn uh, some low-level stuff just to get off the ground. Uh, but again, I, 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 I caution the listener: don't necessarily focus too much on one or the other side. Uh, you know, meander as you will, uh, but always be learning valuable things and aiming to learn valuable things, and, and continue to build your mastery no matter where in the stack you look for it. So again, this is the Regina 120, uh, video 2, Forest versus Trees. If you have any questions or if you disagree violently and want to troll, uh, you know, our, the, the comments for this will hopefully be open just like they were in my previous video series. Um, if you have any improvements or, or uh, suggestions on how this series could be bit better, uh, feel free to leave them. Uh, and again, this is Jeff Cliff. Hopefully you enjoyed it.